I could, <laughs> I could have a 10 minute video of just me making that face because I am speechless. I am completely speechless. In saying that, I do have to find something to say for the next 10 minutes, otherwise I won't have much of a video, but oh my god. It was just exactly what PlayStation needed to do to solidify their victory this holiday season. And I, I, I know, I know, I know, I know. Oh no, give me a second. Because I do, I actually am one of those people that kind of find it cringe when people try and find a winner in all of these events. When we have E3, everyone wants to figure out who won E3, and it's all subjective. There usually isn't, in my opinion, a clear-cut winner when it comes to something like this. But when we're talking about two consoles that are so clearly competing with each other this holiday season, that now, as we know, release two days from each other, and they both cost the same with some variations, but they both cost the same, that is competition, and there will be a winner. And as far as the build-up, oh, PlayStation won this, man. I, I, this, oh my. I was left speechless after their event today. I streamed it on Twitch with about 1,500 of you, and I want to thank everyone that watched it with me. I am speechless. It's, it's incredible. It's incredible. I can't believe it. I just didn't think anything really would happen today. In fact, I was surprised to find out their event was going to be 40 minutes because in my mind, I was like, well, what, are we, what, what, what could they possibly show that we wouldn't have already seen or we wouldn't know about? I assumed we'd be getting a price and a release date, and then maybe we take a closer look at some games we saw in the last event. But 95% of the games we saw in the last event that last event, by the way, being awesome in itself, showing us some really cool games, but 95% of those games were nowhere to be seen today, because instead we got shown a whole bunch more new stuff, and Fortnite, but a whole bunch of new stuff. Mm, I can't believe it. I'm gonna go through this event and talk about all the things that excite me, but, I, you know, I'm out here with a bold claim that probably isn't that bold to a lot of people, that PlayStation won, and I want to talk about why really quickly, and, and I want to say, yes, I'm standing here with a PlayStation shirt on and a, a whole slew of PlayStation games behind me and it might make me come across like a fanboy if you don't know who I am. I am very split down the middle with all my consoles. I love them all for different reasons. It's so hard to still be as excited for Xbox as I am now and we are all for PlayStation because that event today was insane. Here's what Xbox had going for it originally. It had Halo, its flagship IP releasing day one. That fell through. I could have a whole conversation about my theory as to why and what was going on with that game, but as it stands, that fell through and it got pushed back to 2022, which, good call by uh, 343, because that game clearly wasn't ready, but that left Xbox launching a console with no exclusive, no reason to really pick it up. The only other thing Xbox had going for it, unless you really are into specs and it's technically a more powerful console, the only thing it really had going for it was its backwards compat. The fact that it could play a whole ton of games, a whole slew of games that had Game Pass where you could, you know, pay $10 and get like a bunch of games you can play day one, whatever, Game Pass. Game Pass is pretty great and I'm not, I'm not discrediting that, Game Pass is actually pretty great. But PlayStation came out, pretty much every PlayStation 4 exclusive that has come and gone is included in PlayStation Now and you can play all of that day one. PlayStation took the one big thing Xbox had left going for it and said, well, we'll do that too. And then PlayStation matched the price. I can't, I can't, oh my gosh. If you haven't seen the event, let's go through it really quick and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Yet again, we had another PlayStation event with really no talking whatsoever. There was little snippets here and there of someone saying something to introduce a game, but it was pretty much just all gameplay all the time for another 40 minutes. This is how you do an event. So it very casually started with Final Fantasy 16. Uh, yeah, I mean, this, <laughs> this is the thing. I have never seen such a strong lineup going into a new generation of console. PlayStation hasn't missed a beat. They, they, this whole generation, they smashed out game releases one after the other, right up until launch of the new, we just had Ghost of Tsushima. We just had Last of Us 2, two of the biggest, and for some people, the best exclusives on this console. And in, in a couple months, we're getting the new one. Right up until the new one, they were smashing releases, and on the new one, they got just got more coming. They haven't missed a beat. They've been 
It's insane. It is insane. I can't believe it. A new Final Fantasy. We also saw gameplay in here too, by the way. And it looked very similar to 15. I think that's a good call because the gameplay was my favorite part of 15. Then we got a look at Spider-Man and I, I mean... <laughs> The last game was really good, so we can expect a lot of the same, but I think the thing they're really showing off here is just how much this PlayStation is doing. That fight on the bridge, there were so many lighting effects and destruction effects just while you're fighting, like not even in, like during the gameplay. And then, I don't know way. <laughs> okay, growing up, I loved the Harry Potter books. Read them all, watched all the movies, but the thing I really loved, the Harry Potter games. So underrated. We have a new Harry Potter game. I don't know anything about this. I hadn't heard this was coming. I don't I don't know what like since when this was a thing. But the gameplay, the actual game looks amazing. There's little snippets of gameplay in here. It kind of reminds me of like that game Bully by Rockstar, but set in Hogwarts. I don't know why I've never thought of that as, uh, as an idea, because that in itself sounds exciting, but I don't know if that's what this is. I can't tell if it's MMO, which I don't think so. I can't tell if it's single player. I can't tell if it's like one to four co-op. But either way, there are some really cool visuals going on in here. Parts that I'm I'm hoping are actually gameplay because holy crap, they look fantastic. Someone's someone's doing the lawn behind me, by the way. So if you hear the a, a lawnmower during this, I'm sorry, I couldn't wait. I was too excited. 2021. So that's next year. That's next year. I don't know if that's exclusive, actually. You can let me know down below. I don't think that was exclusive, but still very exciting. Oh, and then everyone's favorite franchise, Call of Duty. I, I don't mind Call of Duty, it's fine. I, I, Call of Duty definitely has a stigma around it, but they're doing some really cool things with these games. I really enjoyed the single player in the last game. This little snippet of gameplay they showed us of them chasing after this plane. It looked like something straight out of an Uncharted game. It's becoming an adventure that I don't want to miss out on, which is a weird thing to say about Call of Duty games, but they're doing some pretty cool things, and I I suggest you take a second look at these games if for anything other than just the single player. Ah, uh, speaking of Twitch, we got a spoopy scary look at Resident Evil 8, a game that there is no way I'm playing on my own. Uh, I said to my chat today that if they end up putting it in VR as well, which I hope they do, that could be a really fun game to play on Twitch in VR. These Resident Evil games have literally become terrifying. They're not the Resident Evil games I remember by any means, but they are legitimately terrifying. So the only game we've got to look at again today that I think we saw last time was uh, Deathloop, which I do I do feel like needed another look at it because I'm still very confused by this game. I want to say, by the way, uh, PlayStation and Capcom, thanks for nothing. Because <laughs> I got very excited when I saw uh, Devil May Cry. I thought maybe a six game or maybe an expansion, maybe like a Virgil expansion. I got so excited just to be told, ah, DMC 5 is coming to coming to PlayStation 5, which, yeah, I mean, okay. <laughs> Although, I'm glad because I love this game so much and I think it was very underrated. We got this big look at the game in this PlayStation 5 event. Like, this is definitely the hype that this game needs. I want a Devil May Cry 6, so please buy this game so I can get that. Oh, another look at Oddworld. I think what they really highlighted here was the story and the cinematics. I think fans of this series and the original game are gonna really love this one. It's just like, there's nothing worth skipping over. When I react to these events a lot, especially 40 minute events, I try and skip some games because I don't want like a 50 minute video, but I can't skip anything. Five Nights at Freddy's though, I mean, I'll just mention this one. I, I don't know anything about this franchise, but the trailer was pretty terrifying. That thing in the corner freaked me out. Okay, I feel bad saying this because I know a lot of you are huge Demon Souls fans, but never played the original, not really, it's not really my cup of tea, brutally hard games, some clunky controls, I've never loved it, but even I was watching this trailer with eyes wide open and a gaped mouth because it just looks so good. The combat is heavy and weighted. The visuals are stunning. I love that this trailer is is literally showing that moment of someone that has tried beating a boss a hundred times and he knows exactly how to get back there and then finally getting to the awesome looking boss and just getting wiped out immediately like oh back to square one. You can't not get hyped looking at all these crazy over-the-top bosses. These dragons, these creatures, these beasts, like just looking up at them in awe and wondering how the heck I'm supposed to kill that. This event was almost over. There was like five minutes left. It cuts to black and I hear that freaking boss from Fortnite and I thought, oh no, they are not gonna end this awesome event on Fortnite. But even they knew to keep this short because this Fortnite teaser lasted all of about 20 seconds and then it was gone. And the next, 
is when they just demolished everything. I already talked about it at the start, but Final Fantasy 15, Monster Hunter, Fallout 4, Days Gone, Mortal Kombat, Detroit Become Human. I mean, you name it. If it was a fun game this generation or a PlayStation 4 exclusive, you can play it all for free when you get the PlayStation 5 day one just by having your PS Plus subscription to play online. I don't, I don't know, man. Like, it's... It's such a strong launch for a console. Yeah, PS4, backwards compat on our console. Also, most of these great games, you can play them for free anyway, day one. Also, we have a new Spider-Man game coming on the console during the holiday season. Also, we have games day one like Devil May Cry and Fortnite if you care about that. Also, the price is the same as the other console. Also, it comes out two days later, so there's no need to wait for it if you're excited for next gen. Also, 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 you don't have to wait long for God of War, it comes out the next year. I still can't believe it comes out the next year, by the way. I mean, I am fully expecting, fully expecting a push back to 2022. God of War came out 2018, and I'm okay with it, but I fully expect a delay to 2022. And again, I'm okay, holiday 2022. Take your time, I will wait for that game, okay? But still, Wow. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I, I I feel bad. I honestly do feel bad for Microsoft. I'm not again. I'm not trying to be that guy that's all like, oh, PlayStation, look at us. Like I'm not. I'm not excited that PlayStation won because I wanted PlayStation to do better. That's that's not where I'm coming from here at all. I, I'm excited <laughs> because of what is happening on PlayStation. Being a fan of PlayStation and Xbox and Nintendo, I'm excited when any of them do something right. I'm excited when any of them do something that gets me this excited. And PlayStation has done it. If Xbox was in the position that PlayStation's in and the roles were reversed, I would be standing here just as excited about Xbox, if that makes sense to anyone. And Nintendo, I love Nintendo, but they're not even like in this race right now. They're not that Nintendo is dominating with their generation of whatever you want to classify them in. Nintendo's doing fine. I'm I'm purely just talking about these two right now. It's just a round of applause to PlayStation. I mean, they didn't squander their lead. I, they dominated this generation, they had a full head of steam behind them, and they kept that steam going on the PlayStation 4 right up until the changeover to the new generation, and that steam is just, it's, it's keep on chugging along. You know, I'm still buying both kind of what I do, but I'm also still excited for both. I'll buy an Xbox and a PlayStation day one. But I gotta tell you, if I wasn't a YouTuber, if this wasn't, if gaming wasn't my whole thing, if I was, you know, working on a gaming budget and I could only grab one, I know exactly where I'm going. And I, I mean, it's PlayStation 5. All right, that's my thoughts. Hope I didn't upset anyone. I try really hard not to, especially Microsoft fans, because I feel bad for them and they have, you guys, I know, I mean, it sucks. I know it sucks. And trust me, I would I would be defensive too. But I mean, you just gotta take the L. <laughs> Alright guys, bye.